king became more powerful and called himself Before getting into today's Japanese history lecture, I want to say I would really really appreciate it if you could give a thumbs up and press the subscribe button if you like this video. Okay, let's get into it. Japanese history lecture. Yeah! Today's topic is <gasps> Kohun period, okay? Kohun period indicates Hmm. That is Kahun. No, it's Kohun. <laughs> that is Kohun. No, it's Kohun. <coughs> that is Ka. No, it's Kohun. Kohun period indicates from about 300 to 538 AD. And Kohun period is characterized by the increasingly unified power of the government. Kohun period is named after the two mounds, which is called Kohun. That is for members of the ruling class during this period. And especially huge two mounds were built in Nara Prefecture in Kink area. Kinky. Kinky. Hey, it's not kinky. It's kinky. Don't say that. And Nara Prefecture used to be called Yamato. Yamato. And the size of the two mounds symbolizes their big power. And the biggest political union in Yamato is called Yamato Administration. Yamato Seiken in Japanese. Okay. Yamato administration expanded their power starting from Kinki. Hey! Expanded their power starting from Kink area to Kyushu area and Tohoku area. But it said there were some rulers independent of Yamato administration. So Yamato administration could not conduct complete control. Let's talk about other countries. Diplomacy. Yeah. Japanese history cannot be talked about without talking about Korea and China, right? Right, right. In the 4th century, situations around Korean Peninsula had changed. Three countries in the peninsula conflicted with each other during this time. Kokuri, Kudara, Shiragi. What are you doing? This is how I remember Kokuri Kudara Shiragi. Kokuri Kudara Shiragi. Okay. In the end of the 4th century, Kokuri went to south and put pressure on Kudara and Shiragi. Hey, 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 yo, yo, yo. Kokuri, what are you doing? What are you doing? Easy, easy. Yamato administration participated in that war and fought against Kokuri. Yamato administration had a big influence on the country in the peninsula, which is called Kala, this country. And during this time, China had the biggest power in East Asia, which means it is very important for a king in Japan to be authorized by China. In fact, according to Chinese report, five kings in Japan brought tributes to China. That implies Kings of Yamato administration intended to hold superior position to Korean countries and to secure iron resources by taking advantage of authorization by China. <laughs> In the 5th century, Yamato administration had expanded its influence over the large part of Japan from the west to the east. And its king became more powerful and called himself Okimi which means great king and he conquered south part of Kyushu area and the south part of Tohoku area. Ha. Yet in Hokkaido and in Okinawa, people lived in the same way as people during the German period, hunting and gathering economy. While Yamata administration developing its power, some rulers resisted and the family the king family weakened its power from time to time. But after defeating a big rebellion, Yamato administration got much stronger power. No. 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 The event is called Iwa Ino Ram. Okay. Ram means rebellion and Iwa is the name of the leader. So it just means rebellion by Iwa. Let's talk about the culture during the Kohun period. Yeah. While Kokuri invading 
the south of the Korea Peninsula, a lot of people came into Japan from the Korea. From, from Korea. They are called Toraijin. Toraijin. Okay. Torai means coming over and Jin means person. Very simple, huh? These Toraijin brought new technologies like weaving, metal work, pottery manufacturing, architecture, and so on. They also taught how to raise horses, how to ride horses, and writing. Yamata administration made the most of their knowledge and new technologies from the continent had changed people's lifestyle. The qualities of iron farming implements got much higher and the productivity remarkably increased. In the 6th century, the closer relationship between Japan and Korea brought Chinese religions and study into Japan. Confucianism and Buddhism came into Japan from Kudara. Thank you for introducing the word by Buddha. At that time, Kudara intended to make better relationship with Japan. In the next video, I'll talk about this person. Almost all of Japanese people know him. Who is he? What did he do? Okay, so please subscribe to my channel so that you can't miss it. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Okay, so see you guys in the next video. Bye.